Coming off the back of a very successful run at Karapek, spirits were high going into the final week before Sanctum's release. We only have a couple more upgrades to work on before hitting our goals of being Sanctum ready, those being Ancient Invention and his upkeep. At this point, the safe play would be to get my best AFK pants on and get working on those tetra compasses for that sweet 95 archaeology. But nine days. Surely we can fit in one last grind. We're about to attempt a grind that is honestly a pretty dumb idea. But before we get to the stupid part, it's time to deliver on the promise from last episode and talk about one of the biggest supply challenges for mid-game Iron Man. Herblore. There's the standout question here of how do you get to 90 plus Herblore for overloads? And honestly, I've just let Jack of Trades do it passively while I've been working on other things. I can't overstate how powerful the Premier membership in the form of the Premier Artifact and getting access to Jack of Trades is for Iron Men, but this sums it up. So rather than talk about how we're going to train Herblore, let's focus on some upgrades that give us a big boon to our supply income and Herblore efficiency. Starting with the latter, I imagine most of you know about the Scroll of Cleansing, but there's an even greater upgrade waiting for you at the Flash Powder Factory minigame. Now, unfortunately I just lost half of you, and the other half have just groaned at their monitors, so I need to explain this somewhat obscure minigame to the first half, and convince the second half that it's worth playing it for 7 hours on spotlight to get the following outfit pieces. So the TLDR of Flash Powder Factory is that you're helping Brian here make Flash Powder. The way you do this is by playing an Agility Arena-esque minigame, which to be honest I don't know why they thought we needed another one of those, but the importance to playing this minigame on Spotlight is that there's going to be a lot of people AFKing for Fella, which means you can just pickpocket yourself all the way up to Max Apparatus, which is 6, at the start of every round for maximum points, and also you will be getting more Fella yourself. Now. While the Botanist Mask and its add-on, which is one of the outfit pieces we want, aren't buyable with Fala, the entirety of the factory outfit is, and we want three pieces of that outfit. The top, the gloves, and the boots. We're leaving our leg slot open so that when we get the Mauritania Legs 4 in the future, we can use those for their benefit when making prayer renewals. Of these pieces, the first piece to mention is the Botanist Mask and its add-on. The modified botanist mask gives you a 5% chance to make a duplicate potion when making any potion, including unfinished potions and combination potions. These cost a total of 2000 Brian points and cannot be bought with Fella, so they're the first thing we're going to be buying with our Brian points. What can be bought with Fella, however, is the factory outfit. Fortunately, we only need the three pieces of this to get the set effect we care about a 12.5% chance to make a 4-dose potion instead of a 3-dose potion. Might sound minor, but it's roughly a 4% increase in potions when making non-combination potions, so very much worthwhile. Especially since, while getting the botanist mask, you will be earning Fala to buy your first piece of this outfit. Now, I could sit here and try and convince you to spend 7 hours to get this outfit, or I could just show you the difference in herbs required to make 500 holy overloads with and without the outfit pieces, and let you make your decision. Let's move on to the next part, improving our herb runs. There's some obvious stuff here, like making sure to use super compost on every patch. I personally just pay the leprechauns to do it for me, because the lazier I can be doing farm runs, the more likely I am to actually do them. The main things you want to work on to boost your farming yields beyond this are farming juju potions and the master farmer outfit. The latter you can just speed up getting by spending beans at the player owned farm for fragments, and the former is now a lot easier to get with the ability to hunt the relevant Jadinkos on Anachronia. If you were playing when Herblore Habitat was released, you probably remember Juju Potions as being these things that are a massive nightmare to make and not worth your time at all. That could not be further from the truth anymore, now you can buy the seeds and hunt the Jadinko on Anachronia with no other prereqs, except needing 10 more hunter levels. Juju potions are way more accessible and way less time consuming to deal with now. In the case of farming juju potions, we're going to be using Ugoon, which we can just buy the seed from Papa Mumbo and then plant it in the herb patch in the middle of Herblore Habitat. The secondary we need is Marble Vines. These drop from hunting Igneous Jadinkos, which you can either have 74 hunter and lure them to the Herblore Habitat, 
Or if you just have 84 Hunter, you can hunt them on Anacronia without having to worry about any of that. And the reason these potions are so vital to your Herbrons is they increase your yields by about one third. So once you've got your potions and your outfit, next up is to plan out how you're getting to all the patches. The Lunar Spellbook is incredible for this with its Cathabi and Salphalador teleports, and once you have enough Livid Farm points, even a direct teleport to the Trollheim Herb Patch. Otherwise you want to use your Ectophile to get to the Mauritania Patch, a Mystical Sand Seed for the Garden of Karid Patch, or just start your run there if you don't have one of those, and the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed will get you to the Kroos Patch. The rest are close enough to the Lodestone to not need a teleport item. The exception to this is the Wilderness Patch, which despite being the only place you can grow Bloodweed, should definitely feature in your everyday herb runs even if you're not growing Bloodweeds, as it can become disease free by completing some of the Wilderness Diaries, which also give you the sword to teleport straight there. As for utilising multi-planting, the highest I'd recommend going on an Iron Man is planting two seeds per patch, and one if the seed is hard to come by. The only time I really recommend doing more than two per patch is if you are just flooded by a certain type of seed, <clears throat> and you want to farm Cruxacal favour to get those sweet incense stick upgrades. As for other ways to get overloads, there is actually a boss that surprisingly has overloads on its drop table, and that boss is a Raxor who's going to be the focus of our main grind today. Araxor is a giant spider boss whose defining feature, other than the eight legs, is the choice of pathways in which to fight him. Every four days a different path is closed, with the paths generally being known as one, or the minion path, two being the acid path, and three the darkness path. So when people say it's the two free rotation, they mean that the acid and darkness paths are open. You get to choose which of the two open pathways to take the fight down, and each has its own set of mechanics, both in the fight and in the loot table. Araxor's primary loot is a set of tier 90 weapons, a scythe, bow, and staff. Naturally, we're interested in the staff, which will soon have the ability to use our new Greater Concentrated Blast ability. However, whichever weapon you wish to make, you will first need to obtain a spider leg. This is dropped in three pieces, and which piece you can get on any given kill is determined by the path you choose to fight him on, with the top coming from the minion's path, the middle from the acid path, and the bottom from the darkness path, we have to farm each path enough to get its respective leg piece. But the paths aren't always available. That's what makes this tricky. If we get unlucky on an individual leg piece, then we don't have a huge amount of time to ride out that bad luck. This becomes a real problem, however, once we introduce the Enrage mechanic. At the start of each day, Araxor is at 0% Enrage. Every time you defeat him, this Enrage rises by 20%, capping at 300%, increasing Araxor's damage by that amount. To put it simply, this boss is not designed to be excessively farmed by someone in our gear in a short time period, and we want to get a whole weapon in 9 days. This is not how I would normally recommend approaching this boss on an Iron Man, but the reward of a full tier 90 weapon is too much to ignore for me. On the note of weapon, I only mentioned how to get a leg, you still need to turn that into a weapon, using either Araxor's Fang, Web or Eye. These items are on a table that you have to make a 1 in 120 roll to hit, and there are 4 slots in that table, one for each weapon piece. But that's only 3 slots I hear you say. The 4th slot is a duplicate entry, based on the style of Araxor himself. When you enter an instanced arena, or enter with a pheromone in your inventory, it causes Araxor to spawn in the style weakest to your main hand weapon. Defeating the melee form of Raxor will net you an increased chance of the Fang, Range will do the same for the Web, and Mage for the Eye. We need the Eye to turn the Leg into a Staff, so we need to fight the Mage form of Araxor. There's just one problem. We only have decent Mage gear at this point. Our ranged armor is still mostly Royal Dragonhide, and I don't have time to go and farm a new armor set. So we have to make a decision. One. We can fight Major Axor with magic, but we will have greatly reduced accuracy. Thanks to the combat changes, this isn't the worst idea in the world, 
but the kills will be very, very slow. Two, we can fight Major Axor with ranged and absolutely destroy our food supply right before Sanctum. Not an ideal situation. And three, we can fight Melee Araxor with magic, getting reasonable accuracy and using our best gear, but losing the increased drop rate of the eye. I ended up starting with a combination of options two and three, fighting low in rage Araxor with range, and then swapping to magic as the fight got harder. The one thing I can say about this grind is that it did not start in the way I expected at all. Okay, first ranks and I forgot my luck of the dwarves. Welcome back. Yeah, the problem with, uh... The annoying thing about ads is... <laughs> oh, we actually got that? Yo! Uh, I think that actually complicates Rax a little bit now, but hey, pet already. Okay, that's our uh, melee form pet unlocked. Oh, I don't have the ring, no. Yes, didn't matter. We got the middle. Okay, so this is going to be a... This is going to be a scuffed kill, guaranteed. Because I don't know where the arrows are going to appear on my screen. Don't you just- you, wait, you can press the arrow on the keyboard? That makes it so much easier. Jump up, up, up. Okay. Araxi number 25. The seeds and brews. And there is a 300% enrage Rax. Okay, so we we can do 300%. Oh my god. What is that loot? So we had a pretty lucky opening in the middle path. Within 25 kills, we got a middle leg piece and the base pet. For those who don't know, there's basically six base pets, which the first one is random, but then the rest of them you can get guaranteed. And once you have all six of those pets is when you can roll on the quote real pets. But back to what we really came here for. Our path rotation that we had to play with was we had four days of two free, which is the easiest path, which is a nice one to jump in on. Then we had four days of one free, which is one of the least fun. And then we had a single day of one, two to wrap up any leg pieces. So this means we have five days of path two available, which is why I focused the middle piece first. We have eight days of path three available and five days of path one available. If we're going to go dry on any leg piece, the bottom piece is the piece to do it. But as you can probably tell by the fact that I went for that 300% enrage kill, I am planning to push 300% enrage every single day until we either see the leg piece or we run out of days, whichever comes first. Something else I'm thinking of doing is trying to get a bunch of magic short bows and guffic staffs and swap out what this in this EOF. You logs to start us off. Anyway, let's get this leg piece. Blue charms, I guess, saves that. Okay, kills are going, going solid. Water talismans and blue charms. Guess we take those. Okay, kills are getting a little more dangerous. And there's some more Onyx Bolts. Yeah, we're definitely getting quicker range kills. Ah, the troll. The troll not leg. Okay, another X down. Four. You logs. Oh, what? It followed me! You. <laughs> ah. Dang it. I was trying to look for it and it just, it was under me. I dived, like, a tick too soon. Oh, well. I feel like I'm going to take that as a uh, stop doing racks for a little bit. Hidden. Okay, first racks of the day. Throw on the luck of the dwarves, and we get magic seeds. Okay, second raxy. Not going too bad. Gave myself enough time to wake up. Serenic scales, yes! Not a, not a leg piece, but... <laughs> I mean, all you've got to do is look at my armor to know why that's good. 
And then we're going to send our Mage Hour of Rex because we got up to 180% in rage with range. And I feel like I feel like having Animate dead for a bit. There we go. There's another pet. And seeds. That cord does not give a floof. Bloody stone spirits. <laughs> Why is that core only jumping once before just deciding I need to die? <laughs> it's supposed to jump like five times, right? Man, as soon as I use freedom, I immediately get a nasty bleed. <laughs> These bleeds are so annoying. Hey, ceramic scales. Not a not a leg piece, not an eye. But at least useful. I don't know what Araxi number this is today. I've lost count. That was almost not very good. But new PR, no new drop. Big sad. There we go. 300% racks done for the day. For you logs. I mean, the bruising. Bruise and blue charms are nice enough, I guess. Well, that puts us up to 62 Araxi. I think we've... Yeah, we're average just, just over 15 kills a day at this point. We've got... Uh, what's that? Mage and melee pet. We've got the acid pet. Still got to do the pulsing and mirror back pets. And actually get a weapon. <laughs> We are going to be working on two achievements here. First off, I need to kill range Rex, which is why we are going in with a melee weapon to force it to spawn in the range style. But I am not going to do any damage for this phase or phase two. Okay, so the reason I'm doing no damage this phase and uh, in phase two is because I need a Rex or to heal for 160k in phase three. Now, maybe doing this in the range phase, in the same time I do the range kill and mage gear, not in my biggest interest. But, uh, we should be fine. I also didn't check if I had lantern diamond incense sticks. So, now we have to chunk through a 300k Araxor in P3. Which is part of the reason why I'm doing this on 0%. There we go. So we just got Steve and Lana, which are the range. Wait, hang on. Did I not? I didn't run Torment that entire kill. No wonder I wasn't using any prayer. But also no wonder that took so dang long. So now if I kill this. Oh, it's 1500, not 3k. No. Oh, so we didn't get three pets and two kills. But we know what to do now. Ooh, another pheromone. Yes. Pheromone and overloads. Now I'm caught up with the current loot from Spider. What have you got so far? Five pets and a spider leg middle. And this should be our sixth pet and maybe our spider leg top? Has anyone ever said I look like Mod Raven's son? No, but that sounds like a compliment to me. Okay, just water talismans. Wait. That didn't give us the pet? No, it didn't. I did kill it with the mirror back, right? I'm pretty sure we did it in both phases. There we go. Gavin has been unlocked. We have all the base pets from Araxi. No leg. But all the base pets done. Yeah. I, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just rezo a hit and heal up. And then the minions ate, instantly ate the rezo. And I was like, oh yeah, duh, should I kill the minion? Nah. My brain is switched off from Rax right now. I mean... We got two less kills in a day compared to two free. More supply intense. But it still only took two hours. So. I guess that's I guess that's fine. 
Not great for my chances of getting the top leg piece, though. God, the damage from minion path is kind of mental. Like, just the, just the range minions are absolutely shredding me. Okay, first kill with range, and we almost emptied our food in one fight. Oh, I think going for an eye like this is going to be a painful experience. Okay, Mage Rex is Sad Rex this week, or this rotation. So let's just get the eye right now. You know, I, I can't even be mad about that. Yeah, I, I cannot tank that many minions in this gear. I'll either burn through my food in P3 if I just sit in that phase waiting for Araxor to spawn all the minions. Or I risk just dying to Araxi if she summons like three waves of minions. Yeah, I have to do I have to do path one if I'm gonna try and use ranged. I have to kill the minions before we get to Araxi. I, I mean I got three less kills than yesterday in two in roughly the same time, I guess. But God, did today feel so much worse. Been a busy day. I didn't want to miss out on my two hours of Rex, though. And at least we got up to 200% in Rage. It's not an amazing performance by any stretch, but we at least got some kills. We got some loot rolls. Still working towards that leg piece. And tomorrow's another day. We'll come back. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, isn't that right, Doris? Okay. Second kill of the day? Any luck? Seeds. Is that how we're doing today? Both kills have been super restores, and it's stone spirits into seeds. Oh, Rex, I... You know, most of your drops are great. Okay, 88 Araxi have been defeated... Those little spiders absolutely try and shred us. But Rune Salvage. After a few frustrating days, and to be honest, four days of absolutely nothing. I ended the stream on the eighth day of this grind. Something like this. Maybe that's for the best. Maybe I just accept that my bad luck beat me this time. Because what am I, what am I going to do? Grind 300% and just... That was very much a pressure on myself situation. I wanted to get a knock stuff by Monday and getting a bottom by the end of today was the was the only way I could do that. Bluntly, I'll just say it. Like, we gave it. We gave it our best shot. We did. What? So we got this piece on like 30kc, right? We did 110 kills. We have nearly tripled the drop rate of the spider leg bottom in like five days, five, five to six days. But okay, maybe minus a little bit because we did like 10 runs on first path. But we didn't get that piece either. So we nearly tripled the drop rate in uh, since we got the leg piece middle. We gave it a dang good shot. After I ended stream, I genuinely debated if I was going to give up and just go into Sanctum with Cywiz. It would have been in line with my original goal. This was just a little stretch goal. But something someone said to me kind of stuck with me. And he knows who he is. <laughs> yes! Yes! Did it! That feels good. Pretty dang happy for a guy who only has two leg pieces and still doesn't have an eye, but it does mean that the plan wasn't dead in the water yet. I was not willing to just lay down and let the spider walk all over me. So we're now at 149 KC with two leg pieces, and if we can get the leg top and the eye today or tomorrow morning, before Sanctum drops, then we have succeeded for the 174th time. If you're wondering why that is minus one, I don't want to talk about it. Yes! 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 
She can also summon minions. She can uh, drop a web on herself. If darkness path is open, she can drop darkness and you have to move around her to a patch of light. She is a blocking mob. So darkness here is kind of scary. Yes! Yes! Glitch! Yes! We are done! Yes! We have done it! We now have a tier 90 magic weapon. Look at it! I'm free! I don't need to do Rex anymore! I don't need to do Rex today! <laughs> we have done it! Oh, we have done it! We have done it! 179 kill count! And we have got a Noxious Staff, all the Rex base pets. We are so gaming today.